Welcome to the tip channel. That is perfection. Today we're going to take a look at assembling Conestoga Woods knockdown cabinet. Tools that you're going to need. Mallet, wood glue, just a normal yellow carpenter's wood glue, a wet rag, and I typically use an 18 gauge quarter inch crown, one inch long staple. Now we'll start by first of all, laying down a piece of cardboard. I don't want to scuff the frame. Turn the frame upside down. We want to run some beads of glue. And what I normally is go it towards the inside. And I run a bead right along that groove. Do the same on the other side. And then for the bottom and the top, I run a bead on the outside. That way I don't get a lot of glue on the inside of the cabinet. Side panel, you want to put glue for the back panel and glue for the top and bottom in the grooves. Now sometimes you will notice a little fuzzy uh, in this dovetail groove, if you see that fuzzy, you might want to take a file and clean that up a little bit just so your parts go together a little easier. Now, Conestoga uses a rubber spline, and I'm hoping you can see that. And uh, basically what it is, it's a spline that has grooves on both sides. And uh, one goes into the groove in the cabinet side, and then it will continue to go into the cabinet frame. And that holds you into place until your glue sets up. So you simply line that up, tap it down into place, check your bottom and top, Now we're ready for the bottom and top. Now bottom and top again has that rubber spline and has a dovetail joint on the edge of the top and bottom. Make sure you put the finished side towards the inside of the cabinet. Sometimes they go together just that easy. Put the Top in. Now we're ready for the back of the cabinet. And we want some glue in the grooves for the tops and bottoms. Now you can normally tell whenever the back panel is into place uh, into your top and bottom because you'll have a quarter inch reveal on your sides. 
Now you're ready to staple the cabinet. And uh, as again, I'm using the 18 gauge stapler. And you want to go a little bit of an angle, just so you don't pop out on the inside of the cabinet. Not a lot. You're looking at probably about five degrees on an angle. Now, if you're worried about shooting through a finished side, which we have a finished side here, if you'll notice this side's a little thicker. I've ordered it on what's referred to as a flushed finish side. That changes half inch plywood to three quarter inch thick plywood, which makes it really nice whenever you're running your crown molding. So that instead of having to notch out your style for the crown, you simply wrap it right around. You can see it's only about a 32nd of an inch difference. So it saves you a lot of grief out in the field. Conestoga added some drillings to give you an idea where to put your staple at so you're in the center of your top and your bottom. So we'll go ahead and anchor that. And again, we'll shoot this side. Now, one little tip is Check your side to see if it might be bowing out a little bit. You might want to push it in just a hair in the middle uh, while you're stapling. Just that simple, we have a wall cabinet. All we need to do is wipe out our glue this is ready for doors. Now we'll take a look at putting a base cabinet together. Now, pretty much just about the same as the wall cabinet that we did, but we'll run through it one more time so that you have a good feel for it. Now, one nice thing about Conestoga cabinets is that if you order the nice Blum Motion uh, tandem track from them, uh, they will put two holes in the back of the cabinet. That's for the brackets on the drawer track. So what you do is you put the two adjustable ones in first, put that in about the center of the hole, then shoot a couple more screws in. So as an old timer, I can tell you, it's a whole lot better than getting down on your hands and knees and trying to attach those in the back of the cabinet. That helps a lot. Okay, so recapping, we're looking at glue for the cabinet side on the inside the cabinet groove. That way we don't worry about getting it on the outside of the cabinet. And then for the bottom, again right after the bottom groove. The top, right after the top groove. Then we want to put the glue in the side of the cabinet. Now, the base cabinets are a little bit different in that there's about a three inch strip that goes in the front and a three inch strip in the back. So all you want to do up at the top, just about a three inch section of glue. If you forget and run the whole length of the groove, not going to hurt a thing. Put your side in. Check your top. First two rules of carpentry, number one is have to have a hammer. Second rule, almost anything can be used as a hammer. Number three, don't use your hand as a hammer. 
And sometimes, number four, all you need is a bigger hammer. Now, you have two strips. The front one will have the plastic um, rubber, plastic, um, hickey jiggers in it. Now you want to slide your back piece in before you put your back on. Hang your back, throw some glue in it. Just be careful to put your drawer parts towards the top. Now for this top strip, what I normally do instead of trying to beat it in uh, is that I just take a couple squeeze clamps and bring it right up into place. Look to see it's in the groove and it's ready to be stapled. Again, quarter inch crown, 18 gauge staple, one inch long, five degree angle. Check the center. And we have a base cabinet assembled. We just need to clean off the glue. Now, you can order a toe kick backer with your order if you want. What I do is I typically use three quarter inch plywood, stain it to match the cabinets, and I run it across all of the cabinets. So it gives you a nice, clean, finished look. Next, we're going to look at putting together a corner wall cabinet. I refer to it as a diagonal corner wall cabinet because it's on a diagonal in a corner of a kitchen. Uh, I think Conestoga's terminology is um, corner wall cabinet, single entry, something like that. Uh, anyways, this cabinet is made just a little bit different. Uh, it does not have the rubber splines in the front like all the rest of the cabinets I've showed you so far. They've actually machined the front edge of the cabinet in order to go right into the frame. So this part right here goes right into your frame. So what we'll start by doing is putting some glue down into that groove. And we will slip this side in. Now, all the rest of our cabinets, we did both sides. And then we slipped the bottom in. Now, as you can see, there's absolutely no way we're possibly going to slide the piece into two sides on an angle all at the same time. So what we're going to do instead is we'll go ahead and hit our glue here and we'll slide our top and bottom in. Now what I'm thinking about it, the one thing that I forgot was rule five of the hammer. Almost everything can be fixed with a hammer. 
Okay, so got everything glued up and we're ready to actually put the bottom and top in. So that's our next step. Again, make sure the finished side is towards the inside of the cabinet. And we're going to slide Sometimes you need a fifth hand. Yeah, there's, there's that rule with the hand as a hammer. Okay. And we'll get the other one in. All right, now that we've got that part in, we can stick the other side on. So we'll go ahead and get it glued up. And we slide it into the top and bottom. Now that we have our two sides and our top and bottom into place, we're ready to slide our two backs into place. Now, you need to pay attention just a little bit because the side that goes into the cabinet side is square. And then the back of it is made on a V groove, if you will, to accept the third back. So, that having been said, we know our flat side needs to go towards that side. We've got our glue in our panel. And while I'm remembering things, I went to the doctor the other day, and the doctor says, how you been feeling, Don? And I said, oh, pretty good, doc but I've been thinking a lot about the hereafter. He said, oh, Don, he said, you're young. You don't have to worry about the hereafter. I said, no, Doc, you don't understand. I keep walking into the other room, standing there wondering, what am I here after? I know, I know. I'm no Richard Pryor. Okay, at this point, everything is assembled with the exception of this last back piece. And as I mentioned, we have the V-grooves in there, and this will slip right into those V-grooves. And then you staple everything together. Next up, we want to show you how to mount the drawers in a cabinet. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Conestoga had it pre-drilled for the back bracket, so it's already into place. There's a, a little slot that slips right into that bracket. And with the Blum Motion, what you're looking at is that the screw hole, you want to be in the center of the frame. That makes the front of the track about an eighth of an inch or so back from the face. Now, you can just screw right into the style. Uh, I prefer to use a 764 self-centering drill bit. Now, what does that mean? As you drill, this outer casing pushes back and drills a 764 hole. And we'll go ahead and screw that into place. Put a second screw in.
and we'll do the same for the right hand track now your customers are going to love this blum motion track uh, this tandem system works so smooth and it's got that cushion close feature so as it gets a couple inches away from the cabinet it's going to very softly close um, now basically we have the track in the cabinet and uh, I want to show you these pistols, what I refer to as a pistol grip. Now what they are is, is that you can see that when you push it like that, that releases it from the track. So if a customer wants to take these out for cleaning, uh, it's very easy. Also, the Blum has an adjustment feature on this as well. So we'll go ahead and slide that into the cabinet. And you'll hear a click as those two pistol grips in the front engage. Now, this is what I was referring to as the cushion close. I'll try to slam this drawer. You notice it stopped about two inches from the cabinet and then very cushion closed. So a real nice feature. Uh, these tracks will take a lot of weight. They're full extension, meaning that the entire drawer box comes out of the cabinet. So a lot of tracks are what's called three quarter extension, meaning the last three, four inches of that drawer is in, still inside. So how do you get what you want out of a drawer in the back of it? But full extension, real nice feature. Next up, we'll show you how to attach the drawer head. Next, we're going to show you how to mount the drawer head on the cabinet. Now, anytime I'm doing something repetitive, I make a template. In my case, I ordered a half inch overlay, meaning I'm overlapping the cabinet opening by half an inch. That means I have a one inch reveal. Naturally, we have inch and a half face frames. So I'll put my template into place. I've drilled two 3 16 holes through the front of the drawer box. I'll go ahead and hold my drawer head up. I'm going to shoot two one inch staples into the drawer head. Now I'm going to check my reveal just to make sure that I didn't move. And we're perfect. So we want to attach it permanently. Now, if it had been off a bit, a little bit, take a mallet and tap it. Uh, keeping in mind, the only thing holding it on is the staples. So the staples will bend just a little if you need to adjust it accordingly. Now I have inch and a quarter screws to attach the drawer head. And just that simple, the drawer's done. Now, you can skip the whole hinge boring process by just simply ordering your doors pre-drilled from Conestoga. Um, if you do that, Conestoga drills their holes three inches from the top edge of the door if you're ordering a half inch overlay. What that means is, is that my hinge screw will actually be two and a half inches down. So I've set up a template and I've got a hole at two and a half inches down, three eighths of an inch in. So I'll take my template, put it on my frame, pre-drill my two holes. And now I'm set up for hinges. And again, template. This is set with a one inch block, which is the reveal we have left with the half inch overlay. We'll just simply clap it. I guess I should have faced the camera the other way. Anyways, door's done. The next cabinet that I'm going to assemble from Conestoga is a little more complicated. It's a corner base cabinet. Now, 
To make it a little more complicated, I'm going to make what I refer to as a Super Susan out of this corner base. What is a Super Susan? Now, Lazy Susans in the past have been total garbage. They've been plastic shells that crack and break. They've been uh, shells that rotate on a pole. Things that fall off the back of them that get caught up. They made ones that attach to the doors. Um, and the little ones would like to play with them. They would get their fingers caught in them. Just a total mess. The Super Susan is the very first cabinet that makes any sense whatsoever for a corner base. Now, what is a Super Susan? What you're looking at is a 32 inch diameter shelf. This literally is taking up the entire space inside of a corner base. This is what's referred to as a kidney shape meaning it has the cutout for the corner base. If you're looking for shelves like this and you're looking at a different vendor, uh, some of them are actually changing to Lazy Daisy. So evidently some Susan got upset about it being Lazy Susan. So now it's Lazy Daisy. How Daisy's gonna feel about it? I don't know. We're gonna start the construction of what I refer to as a Super Susan. Now, a couple of different things to get started with. We normally have started with the frame on all the rest of the cabinets. With the corner base cabinet, that's going to be our very last step is putting the frame on. Um, so we're going to start with the cabinet sides and backs. Now we're going to leave two of the backs off. Now, there is sort of a right and left whenever it comes to the backs for the cabinets. They're not like the diagonal corner, sorry. Corner cabinet, single entry, uh, wall cabinet. Um, but basically, this has a V groove, just like that diagonal corner wall cabinet. So that's actually going to accept the last back in our cabinet. So what we wanna do is to check our side. Now what will happen is, is that this back will come down and go right into this side. So we can see that groove wise, at the small groove at the top, big groove at the bottom. So we know these are the two pieces that we start out with. If I use the other back, the V groove is going to be down in there, which is what we don't want. So we'll start just by gluing this back and this side panel. So we'll start by sliding our bottom and top into our first side panel. And into place. Now what we're after is we want that dovetail on the bottom to line up with the groove on the side of the cabinet so that our back can slip down into that groove. We want to check to make sure that our back is all the way into our side. And what I do at this point, just to keep things from moving around, is I go ahead and staple that back into place. Again, quarter inch crown, 18 gauge staple. Now these are the two backs that we're going to leave off until we get our Lazy Susans into place. Or Lazy Daisy, whichever you prefer. Uh, for this side, basically we're going to go ahead and put it into place. At this point, I've got the dovetail groove in my bottom lined up with the groove in the side of the cabinet. I don't want this to move. If this were not a finished side, I would go ahead and shoot some staples in the top and bottom just to keep it from moving around. Since it is a finished side, I'm going to go ahead and add a little angle bracket. Just to hold. At this point, we don't have our face frame on yet. We have two sides and one back into place. So this is a very important step. And what I'm talking about is that if you ordered your hinges from Conestoga, what you're going to find is that this corner cabinet is going to have a Blum hinge, which is... 170, 180 degree opening. What that means is it'll be a demountable hinge. And uh, whenever you open it up, that door will come clear back against the other cabinet. So a real nice feature for accessing this cabinet. But here's the scenario. Whenever it's closed, see that knuckle? 
That knuckle is going to be right here where this Lazy Susan is. So the placement of this Lazy Susan shelf is very important. All right, so first off, pull the cap out of the shelf. And we'll go ahead and slide the shelf in from the back. The placement of the Lazy Susan shelf that we're looking for is one and five eighths from the front of the cabinet box. So basically without the frame on an inch and five eighths. That will leave approximately an inch and three quarters to an inch and seven eighths from the side of the cabinet. This inch and five eighths will give you the clearance that you're going to need for that big knuckle on the hinge. And as you can see, the shelf still fits very nicely inside of the cabinet. With the plastic cap removed, we'll put in the first screw. Now this device will come with about a 12 inch by 12 inch block of plywood attached to the bottom of the bearing. Um, and it has what's referred to as a positioning cam so that it stops with this being equal in the doorway. So what we don't want to do is that we don't want to move that piece of plywood at this time, but naturally we're locked into that position. So what I do is I take a pencil and I mark that front leading edge of that half inch plywood. That way, when I go to turn this, if I move it just a hair, I'll know the correct position to put it back in. So our first shelf is into place and now we're ready to do our second shelf. Now, whenever you order your cabinet, order it with a shelf because the second Susan shelf is going to be attached to this shelf. Uh, I typically always go center of the cabinet for my next one. So put your clips in so that the bottom of the clip is at 13 and a half inches. At this point, we have a clip here, a clip here, a clip here, and a clip here. But as you can see, because we don't have this angled back in, we've got nothing supporting the shelf yet at this point. So what I've done is that we're 13 and a half to the bottom of the clip. I have a mark at 14 and a quarter, that's the top of my shelf. And then at 13 and 7 eighths, I drilled a 3 16 hole, and I'm going to put an inch and a half drywall screw into the shelf at this point. Now, this is a clumsy cabinet to get inside of the door to the customer's home. What you have to do is sort of put it into the jam so the jam is here, and you sort of turn it through the door. So the demountable hinge is nice because I normally pop the doors off and take them to the job site because it's difficult getting through the door. Now there are occasions where you actually have to make a removable toe kick. And what I'm talking about is you cut the toe kick off and then put it back on once you have it inside of the house. Now, if you have like a 30 inch doorway, you're pretty much going to have to build this cabinet inside of the kitchen. But we have our shelf clips into place, and I do make these shelf clips on an angle. These are the angle ones you want to use for this cabinet. And you can take and put a screw up through that to keep that shelf from moving around. Last thing we want is this center shelf flopping around. Now I'll go a step further. I'll take and shoot an inch and five eighths drywall screw here. Since this is unfinished, I'll probably will pop one through here. Once I get my last two backs on, I'll put some screws into the shelf from the back and this side. So this shelf isn't going anywhere when I take it out to the job site and finagle it around getting it in the house. Adjustable shelf in the cabinet is now a permanent shelf. Uh, basically, they make this shelf so that it is back two and a quarter inches from the front of the cabinet box. And remember, our bottom shelf was an inch and five eighths back. So that means that the front edge of our shelf needs to be five eighths of an inch forward from the front edge of this shelf. And still, we're looking for an inch and three quarters to an inch and seven eighths on the side. Now, we don't have a hinge up here, so that's no longer important. I just like to keep things symmetrical. 
with the Lazy Susans into place, what I'll do next is I'll take this cabinet, I'll lay it on its side, I'll slip this back in, and then I'll do this back. So the last step of the cabinet box, you glue and tap on the cabinet frame, and then you'll need to add an assembly screw in the corner to tie the two frames together. And then your cabinet box is done and you are ready for a door. Next, we're ready to move on to the doors. Now, whenever you go to order your corner base cabinet, you're going to find a corner base cabinet R or corner base cabinet left. What that is signifying is what side the hinge is going to be attached to the cabinet. So with these, it's really nice when you have two doors, they're attached together and they're only hinged on one side. So in my particular case, I have a range that's setting right here. Now you can see that if I opened up this door by itself, I would hit on the range, which would make it very difficult for the customer to get into the cabinet. So instead, this door will be hinged to this door, and then both of them will come over in this direction out of the way to give you access to those Super Susan shells. Now, when you go to order these, Conestoga will have the option of what is referred to as a sauce hinge. Do yourself a favor and order these hinges. What is a sauce hinge? It hinges these two doors together. Now, in the old days, we used to use piano hinges, just like on a piano. But these sauce hinges, you can see they are built like a tank. And so it makes those two doors really so it makes those two doors really work nicely together without any issues in the future. So first of all, what you're looking at, put this face to this face, and you know that they notice they have machined edge, the edge of that door. So then in a corner, it really looks nice instead of having that same edge detail as the rest of the door. So take the face of this door and put it to the face of this door. Insert your sauce hinge. Now these do come with a rather long screw. So I always take an eighth inch drill bit, drill down first and then attach it. Now take these up snug, but don't over tighten them. First thing you wanna do is to line up those two doors so that they're good on the top and bottom and then go ahead and drill the sauce hinge and put your screws in. Now, here is what I refer to as the Super Susan Complete. And if you'll notice, Conestoga took the time to machine edge these two doors. So, whenever you have the corner together, see how nice that looks? Watch how nice the sauce hinge works. Comes back, we pull both doors out of the way. Customer has full access to those Super Susans, bringing everything right out to them. If they've had the cheap Super Susans in the past, Lazy Susans, Lazy Daisies, they're going to love this cabinet. Now, remember when we were talking about the position of that Super Susan shell? And this is the reason why we positioned it where we did. You can see that big knuckle hinge would definitely be an issue had we not placed that Super Susan shelf where we did. So that position works out perfect. One more notation is that as you close your doors, you'll see that with the sauce hinge, there's no spring loading. So this door is just a little floppy, if you will. So what I'll normally do is I'll go ahead and mount a magnetic catch right to the inside of the frame. And that'll just keep that door nice and snug. Here is what I was talking about, about the hinge being demountable. If you reach right back towards the rear of the hinge, you'll see this little latch. If you pull out on that latch, the hinge releases right from the back plate. So nice feature to take the doors out to the job site and you just simply pop them right back into place. I'd like to take a few minutes and talk about the Conestoga cabinetry. In regards to construction, we have half inch sides, half inch bottoms, half inch tops in the cabinets, half inch backs, all plywood. There's no particle board in this cabinet. 
Face frames are solid wood. Uh, most of the doors that they offer are, again, solid wood doors. So one of the best in the industry in regards to construction. Now, more importantly, is that you have to look at the quality of finish that they apply to the door. Now, the door, in my mind, is the hood of the cabinet. If you look at a car, if you see a defect in the hood, you're automatically turned off. Same way with the cabinet. That door needs to be perfect. And that is one of Conestoga's strong parts is the quality of finish that they apply to the door. Um, I've been working with Conestoga now for about 20 years. Uh, the nice thing about Conestoga is that if you're a small shop and you get a little overwhelmed with orders, with Conestoga, you can order as much or as little as you want. And what I'm talking about is you can order just doors and drawer fronts. You can order just drawer boxes. You can order just cabinet frames. So it gives you the flexibility of being able to build as much of the cabinet as you want or as little as you want. You can just do the quarter round moldings and panels and crown moldings in your shop. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. But in regards to quality, you're looking at one of the best in the industry. They Now, we talked a little bit about the quality of the product, uh, both in construction and also finishes. But let's take it a step further. Let's look at Conestoga. Conestoga, one of their main plants is in East Earl, PA. And uh, they do give you the option of going out there and picking up your cabinets if you choose, or they will ship it to you. Now, if you can't get a tractor trailer truck into your shop, they will arrange to drop your cabinets off at a distribution center and then have the distribution center send a smaller straight truck out to your shop. They can even request to send a lift gate if you don't have a forklift to unload things. Uh, so very helpful in regards to that. Now, if you choose to do business with Conestoga, the first thing that they're going to do is send a rep out to you and, uh, and take a look at your operation, naturally see if you qualify to uh, purchase product from them. Now, in my case, I was very fortunate. I have a rep named Todd. Uh, and he is fantastic. If I send a question to him within minutes, I have a response. Now, Todd has been with the company ever since I've done business with Conestoga. Now we're talking 20 years. Is that even heard of in today's industry? Most companies are changing reps every month, some of them every year, but 20 years with the same company, that's saying something. Uh, fantastic rep. Now, the next thing after that will be, uh, after you get set up, you'll be using a program that's called Connex. Now, Connex, for the most part, is good. They're constantly making updates. You'll get an update just about once a week. So it's not like a bland program that's out of date. Uh, they're constantly working on and constantly updating it. So a very good order entry program. Now, here's the most important thing about dealing with any company. How good is customer service? Customer service is there for you every day. If a customer service representative can't answer your question, they will put you in touch with somebody who can. And typically, within a few hours, you'll have an answer to your question. Um, in regards to mistakes, first of all, Conestoga has their system so down that very, very rarely will they ever make a mistake on anything. Uh, damage, everything is packed very well to where you won't normally have any damage whatsoever. If there's a fault on their end, they will get it out the door ASAP. If the mistake is on your end, they have what's called red codes and blue codes, where if it, we're talking a couple of items, not an entire kitchen naturally, but if you have some items you forgot or you made a mistake in a cabinet, instead of waiting 
uh, another four weeks like you would with any other company, they have red tags and blue tags to push everything out very quickly to you so you get your job done and you get paid. Now, again, who does that? Now, I do not work for Conestoga. I am not being paid to make this video. I wanted to share this with you because if you are a young company or someone thinking about setting up a cabinet shop and wondering how can I possibly make product uh, and compete with the industry. That answer is pretty simple, Conestoga. I've been with this company or been dealing with this company for 20 years. And what can I say about it? Are you sick and tired of calling and getting busy signals or going to voicemails, which if somebody is finished watching, let's make a deal, they will get back in touch with you, then you need to contact Conestoga. How do I feel about them? They are fantastic. I hope that you found this video informative. And if you did, I would ask that you like and subscribe. And thank you much and have a wonderful day.